Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I am your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 64 of our trek and today we are finishing up on our series of acquiring and investing wealth. Wealth accumulation serves us two purposes. One, it frees us to be able to make wise choices in life that are not dependent on being a servant to others. And second, it allows the ability to make positive impacts on the lives of others through the distribution of that wealth. As we practice this each day, we will create a living legacy, not to honor ourselves, but to honor our Creator. We are recording our podcast from our studios at the Big House in Marietta today. This morning, we worship with Paula's mom at the church where she used to attend when we lived full-time in Marietta. This evening, we were blessed to share our time with our middle son, Barnabas, and his wife, Leisha, other family members and friends at a baby shower for our soon-to-arrive granddaughter, who is due in late September. As proud grandparents, we are excited and looking forward to our sixth grandchild. I have included some pictures in today's journal if you'd like to take a look. We are concluding today on our It's Only Money trek. We have explored a different trail each day of our trek to true wealth. As we approach our destination on this important trek to the land of financial freedom, I would like to share some concluding thoughts today. So let's head out for another day and accumulate the additional wisdom nuggets that we find along the path. Our guiding map for our trek this week has primarily been the book of Proverbs, and we have learned that we must be willing to work in order to obtain wealth. There are no shortcuts on this trek of life. After you have done your part in planning, preparing, and executing your work, you must also realize that when you do prosper in any area of life, it is ultimately God that allows you to prosper. When you forget where your material provisions come from, you start down the slippery trail of pride and arrogance that allows you to believe that you've succeeded on your own. In reality, we are all on this trek together and we should do all that we can to assist one another. We need other people and other people need us to help them. We must never forget that it is God that gives us the ability and the increase. Here are four areas today that we'll consider. First, material wealth does not come to everyone. It is a gift which God has given some. In the eyes of the most inhabitants of this world, all Americans are wealthy, and to a certain extent, we are. Many people are living a false sense of wealth that is dependent on loans and credit cards. There are certain natural and biblical principles that, if followed, will allow anyone to be in a position where they can use their wealth, whether it be small or great, to positively impact the lives of others. If you have material wealth now, or you do obtain it in the future by practicing the principles that we have gathered this week, please take to heart the advice that the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to his protege, Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, 18 and 19. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. This is some sound advice that we should take. Second, we should always look at our material possessions in terms of the principle of stewardship. A steward or manager does not own anything, but has been put in charge of its use. This is hard to grasp for many of us. I think it's more prevalent in America where we take great pride in ownership of things. If you think about this principle, you will realize that all of life is this way. We come into this world with nothing, and certainly we cannot take anything with us when we die. At best, it is entrusted to us for a few short years. We are therefore responsible to be the best managers of all that we have to maximize it to the benefit of ourselves and to others. These principles are clearly taught in the parable that Jesus told and is written in Matthew chapter 25, verses 20 and 21. The man who received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you have entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. This is how we can gain the joy from having and accumulating wealth. The third principle, God may make the area of finances a proving ground for your faith because money cannot buy security, nor is it secure in itself. If you want the details on that, see day 59 of our trek. You must learn then to trust God in all areas of finances. That brings me to a principle which defines the relationship between faith and finances. Financial faith is trusting God to provide for your needs consistent with the way He promised to meet your needs. If a person expects to be blessed without having to work, then that is foolish, not consistent with being a person of faith. If you make hasty commitments financially or are foolish with your money and then look to God for money, that is not consistent with being a person of faith. 
but a person who is unwise in handling money. This type of person may be unwise in many other areas of life also. It has been said that many Christians seem to be addicted to danger. They leap off the financial pinnacles of life expecting God to catch them before they fall flat broke. Let us be careful to exercise genuine faith. God has established certain principles in His Word for every area of life. Let us do those things which God has told us to do, to work, to be generous to the poor, to save, and then leave the matter of accumulation of wealth to Him. Don't expect God to make you wealthy in some miraculous, bizarre, or stupid way when you have not followed the basic principles for wealth creation and retention. And the fourth principle, let us not lose sight of the difference between grace and works. As the basic principles, if we wish to make money, then we must work for it. After all, that is what God said when he cursed the ground on the account of Adam's sin in Genesis 3, verses 19 through 17. That being said, God is sovereign, and not everyone who works hard will become wealthy. Wealth is also a result of God's grace, not just hard work. Hard work does not obligate God to bless us financially. It is simply that which God has ordained to bless. We must follow God's principles to even hope to accumulate wealth, but the end result is up to God. Let's look at it from a farming analogy. We must plant, water, till, and fertilize the seeds in order to obtain any type of harvest, but God ultimately will control the amount of the harvest. We have looked at several topics covering wealth acquisition and growth over the past seven days. If you've missed any of these podcasts or journals, please go back to listen or read them to gather all the wisdom nugget principles that we have accumulated. As in all things, though, true wealth is a life filled with the good things that money cannot buy. Well, that'll finish our podcast for today. If you've missed any of the previous podcasts, especially the last seven days, please check out Wisdom Trek at iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or on wisdom-trek.com. Tomorrow, we will begin a new topic and look at how to unchain your elephant. Please join us at our camp tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek Creating a Legacy. And if you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom, these little nuggets that we accumulate each day, I encourage you to take the time to invest in yourself. First, invest your time in improving Wisdom Trek by leaving your name, email address, and a comment on the website so that we can provide you with the wisdom and insight that best fits your needs. Second, invest in yourself by listening to the 7 Minutes of Wisdom on Wisdom Trek each day. The easiest way to do this is to subscribe at iTunes or Stitcher. And third, invest in the lives of others by sharing with your family and friends, either in person or online, to join us on our journey of Wisdom Trek each day. The journal for this podcast can be found at wisdom-trek.com, where you'll also find pictures, tweetable quotes, wisdom nuggets, and free resources. Thank you for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most of all, your friend, as I serve you through this Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.